War Horse is the critically acclaimed production by the National Theatre, which, due to its popularity, transferred to the New London Theatre. We met up with leading man Kit Harrington on the opening night. He's quite a horse, Albert, but for now his place is with the army. I... Albert now I can't do solemnly swear that we shall be together again. Phoebe arrives, a gleam in her eyes, and the years have found again. And like Barney Corn, who rose from the grain, new year will rise up. You'd think that a wooden structure could never be a real horse, but because they they do the puppeteers do their work so thoroughly, it's quite easy to um, manipulate it into being a real live horse. So it doesn't take it's not much acting required to know it's a real horse. It's li living and breathing. Come on, then, boy. Oh, come on, boy. It's all right. It's all right. I'm not going to hurt you. Boy, it's fade, look. <coughs> look. I promise I won't hurt you. Well, come on, you knucklehead. I know you want that. All right. Suit yourself. The story is about a young boy named Albert and a young horse named Joey who meet and they grow up together and Albert nurtures the horse and the horse is there for Albert and they fall in love and eventually Joey the horse is sold to the army for the First World War and Albert goes off to the First World War to find his horse. Can I say goodbye to him, sir? Of course you may. Now the thing is, Joey, the thing is you're gonna have to go away with that man there, Captain Nichols. Look, I want you to do yourself proud. You drive those Germans back home and then you come home. It'll only be a couple of months. Look, you'll be back by Christmas. He's promised that we should be together again. I promise too. I, Albert now I can't do solemnly swear that we shall be together again. I wrote the book now 27 years ago, and I wrote it from the horse's point of view. I told that story through the horse's ears and eyes and brain, if you like. When it came to the stage at the National, they had to change the perspective. To start with, that's really difficult for an, the originator of the story to accustom yourself to. Now what I wish is I've written the story after the play because I've learned so much about the story from the play, about the power of the story. I told it my own way as naturally as I could. But they've done something, I think, which reaches beyond what I did in the book in the sense that it has fantastic impact, a real impact. No one can sit through that and not come out having been deeply moved. And this 
this is play to me is it's like an anthem for peace and that's why I'm touched by it every time I see it. It's, it's more powerful than the book ever was. I like the book, don't get me wrong. I'm really fond of my book. I wrote the silly thing, but this is wonderful. I heard uh, an incredible story. I always thought this, you know, it's a fictional book. And I thought, as amazing story as it is, it couldn't possibly happen in real life. But there is a story, at least one, maybe two, of uh, a young soldier, a young trooper, going to uh, the First World War um, with his horse. And one of the stories, is about he loses it's a true story he loses his horse and they were reunited after the war so it, it did happen and um, this is obviously fictional but uh, it shows that it did happen in real life it's not entirely fictional then i discovered that there were on our side a million or more horses killed that even those who survived those horses that survived only 65,000 came home that the British government in its wisdom, even for the horses that survived, decided that they would sell them off to butchers in France and Belgium. The irony is huge.